There isn't any group of people in this country that is not being supported by the black woman. Yes, we should have our options open as black women to the most qualified men, but even that can't be the same exact weaponized response to what black men are doing. We don't have to continue as we always have to respond to that and to follow them into these paths of being deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper engrossed in white culture. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot. Room 303. If you are new, welcome to our crew. But my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe we'll go ahead on and subscribe but before you click share this link welcome wi-fi's this episode of the wireless woman is going to be dedicated to the difference between queen and princess energy I hope in this episode to separate the girls from the women. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my Nubian queens to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, welcome. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to another episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like the video, well, I love it. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Leave me some comments below. And if you're feeling the content, go ahead and share it. Also, make sure you click the notification bell for notifications of when I go live on this channel. Because trust me, you want to be there. All right. So today's episode is all about queen energy versus princess energy. And although I have an existing episode about this same concept, you might want to check out. I think it bears revisiting at this point because I'm starting to see a lot of content for black women and a lot of memes, a lot of TikToks that are all geared around black women wanting to live a life of luxury, black women as damsels, black women who are resting in their femininity. And while y'all know there's nothing I want more for a black woman than some rest, <laughs> than being regarded in their divine femininity. I think we may be overcorrecting an error. There is a certain purpose, a certain function of the black woman. There are certain things that only black women can do. The black woman is the first manifestation of God on earth. And I feel like we miss our purpose. We miss our calling when we are too busy trying to compete with the dominant class for their luxury. I believe that black males in a large percentage are becoming white supremacists. It's their desire to not compete with the white man, but acquiesce to him that is causing a lot of them to abandon their community, not want to build up their community, not want to build up the black woman. I believe there's a lot of black men that just frankly want to be white men. Extra, you're nothing but a stupid ass what? nigger. 
Who you calling a nigga? That's why we're seeing so much reverence for the white man's community. So much acquiesce coming from a lot of these black men. Like if you can't beat them, then why not join them? And then it creates this impossible competition between black women and white women for who can be the most submissive and docile. <laughs> However, I believe this is not just detrimental to the black community, but it's also detrimental to the ego, to the function, the purpose of black women. Now, everything in moderation, everything in its time and its season, everything in its place. We really have to examine why we're being catered to in this particular way. Are we being empowered or are we being put to sleep? I believe that the black woman is a very formidable force. We are currently doing a lot of things that are bringing protection and provision to us as a community. And I'm not really sure we're in the best place to try to stop the work of the black community at this time. I don't really feel like that's in our best interest. I think that we're being fed some of the same white supremacy values that are causing our men to become traitorous. I think we're beginning to be fed a lot of white supremacist values that have caused our men over decades to become more and more and more ineffectual. And I think we have to guard against that as black women because we as black women can't now begin to endeavor to want to be like white women you know black women have always been the stewards of the community not just their own but the white community when white men are looking for black people they can trust in their homes in their businesses more often than not it's going to end up being the black woman and it is because of our commitment to excellence it's because of our work ethic it's because of the values that we have been raised up on and i'm not going to say that it's right or it's wrong I purposefully steer away from those types of concrete black and white judgments about it. It may not be fair that black women have been raised up to be the workhorses of the black community. Of course, I can remember the words like I wrote it, but I never thought I had to fight in my own house. But it is the reality of it. And it is where we excel and it is the good that we do. I know myself personally as a black woman, I find a lot of confidence, a lot of pride, a lot of identity in being able to capitalize for myself off of the work that I do. A lot of other people do benefit from the amount of energy and excellence and effort that I put into my work, but so do I, baby. You know, you got to show up in order to cash out. You know, we raised white children in white homes, and now we've got to bring those same value systems into our own home and build our own communities. You know, it's always been black women that were called upon, whether it be to support the black community, white communities. We build up Asian economies with our addiction to the beauty industry, with our lace fronts, lashes, acrylic nails. There isn't any group of people in this country that is not being supported by the black woman. Black women, y'all the blueprints. I told you how many times I got to tell y'all that you are the blueprint that celebrities and influencers use to get rich off of. If y'all say something is cool, they know it's gonna be cool for everybody. I know we all like to sit down and take a break, but I fear that we are being lulled into the throes of white supremacy by this belief that we are going to have the same life that white people have. And while we are spending exorbitant amounts of money on trips to Belize and all of this beauty industry, fast food industry, luxury car industry, luxury bags, clothing, purse. All of this stuff is majority funded by black dollars. We have a healthy, thriving black community. Women will always be sold to more than men are because they are the ones that make the household decisions for where the dollars go. And in large part, the black women lead and head most of the black households in the black community. So we are being sold to. And while we are falling asleep, to be quite honest, dreaming of white dreams, we're beginning to lose our effectiveness, 
our voice within our own communities and within the communities at large. We're just consumers. We're just being bought and sold and merchandised if we don't really continue to have our own wits about us, our own best interests at the forefront. That's the difference between a woman being a queen versus a woman being a princess. A princess is sitting back waiting to be married to some king who she's probably not going to be equal to in the kingdom because she's a wife she's what they call a queen consort and not actually a sovereign not actually a ruler and it's the same thing that both black men and black women are being sold in this time that hey we're gonna give you a kingdom you know it's like all of these dummy governments that the U.S. goes throughout the world setting up those people don't have real power their power is connected and derived from the American societies that are putting them up that are putting up the money to fund their regimes and ultimately where there's a string all you have to do is pull that string in order to control the interest of that community. And it's like I said, as black women, we follow black men into crack, <laughs> into the crack epidemic. And that ended up with a lot of black women being strung out crack mothers. And there was no U.S. sympathy for it being, you know, a mental health crisis. It was a war enacted, a war on drugs that locked up a lot of black men and that left a lot of disenfranchised black women. And these black men, these rappers that capitalized and glorified drug lifestyle and came up off of the back of their community and their women really that were buying this crack and being cracked out, I would know firsthand. This is something that I saw within my own family. People saw me, you know, giving a tribute to my sister. I love my sister. She was one of the most beautiful, talented, smart, intelligent women that I know. But she got sucked into that crack epidemic with black men selling her crack. And she was not atypical. This was something that was going on on a wide scale in our communities. And it was something that plagued her throughout what would end up being the rest of her life. I talk at great lengths about what crack looks like in the black community in the 80s in my book, God Face. And so women, we followed our men before into something that resulted in a glorified life for them. It's a lot of rappers that talk about being able to get out of the hood on the back of drug sales. But you know who got left in those communities along with children? Black women. See, you guessed it. You guessed it. Black women. And now we can't follow our men into white supremacy and white luxury. I'm going to do another episode about these drug dealers turned rappers turned businessmen and capitalists. I'm also going to do another episode about black women beginning to glorify white men and men of other cultures as being elevated above black men when honestly baby a man is a man is a man is a man yes we should have our options open as black women to the most qualified men but even that can't be the same exact weaponized response to what black men are doing with women outside of our community with white women they're weaponizing those women against us but we don't have to do what they do we don't have to continue as we always have to respond to that and to follow them into these paths of being deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper engrossed in white culture. We're going to have to create a counterculture to that, a culture where we're not being plagued by racism, misogyny and sexism. We're going to have to resist all of those values of the patriarchy here in our society that we get to create with our hands but we have to show up and do the work of a queen see a queen has her own kingdom that she's responsible for that she makes decisions for she has to consider whether she wants a king whether she needs a king whether a king can bring and add value to her kingdom or whether she's going to end up in a battle or a fight with her own male consort See, Queen Elizabeth in England never made her husband king. He was the queen's consort. So he never entered into the line of succession. 
his sons had a greater claim to the throne than he did. He had no Prince Philip had no claim to the English throne. They purposefully wrote that in when Elizabeth became queen and married him. You know, it's unfortunate. I understand this black woman. I understand that we want to put our men up on these pedestals and call them kings and do all that. But baby, they got to build a kingdom. While we're out busy building these kingdoms, any man that comes along is a consort. Unless he is bringing his own kingdom to your empire, then you both get to rule and reign together. Because he understands that level of authority. He understands the value and equity you have in your house because he owns a house of his own. He's not saying ridiculous bullshit to you like, I mean, that's your house. That's not my house. You know, we, you ought to sell that house and then we can go out and we can buy a house together. Baby, you only hear that type of talk from men that don't understand ownership. You know, I mean, that's your car. That's not my car. I need a car of my own. You're only going to end up being in competition with someone that wants to be like you when they've never had what you've had. If they understand what it takes to maintain what you have, then that person can give you the support that you need. See, a queen understands what type of counsel she needs around her. A queen understands what type of people are needed to advise her. A queen has advisors around her. She doesn't have people around her that don't have what she has. She doesn't have people around her that can't give her the type of sound advice that will help her to grow, build, and protect her queendom. Why are you trusting relationship advice that's coming from unmarried men? Divorced men. Like you need a daddy. You need a father figure. I understand that. And it ain't going to be these pastors. It ain't going to be these self-proclaimed relationship gurus. You may need a woman to be your father figure. You're going to have to let the love, advice, and guidance of women who have experienced what you experience, who have the same thing to lose that you do if the information they're giving you is unsuccessful, let those women be your father figures. You don't see men seeking out the advice of women. And whenever I find fatherless women, more often than not, they have issues with their mom. See, I've always had a hen house around me. As a matter of fact, a large part of my relationship with my father came through his mother and his sisters. You know, they were his stand in representative. And I guess he felt that that was sufficient. But you know what's crazy? It was it was. These women have loved me with the unconditional love and support. They have given me queen's advice. These are women who own property, who are able to take care of themselves, who, whether men come or whether men go, are completely undeterred by the seasons of their lives. They are evergreens. They grow and bloom in the winter. They grow and bloom in the spring. They are undeterred by the seasons of their lives. And this is what we have to learn how to become and be in order to be constant and consistent and steady as women for any type of partnership that we would want to be a part of. A lot of us are attracting unstable, double-minded men because we unstable, double-minded. And women, we are competing with our men for white supremacist values. That's why we want to be damsels. That's why we want to compete with these white women and these women of other cultures to see who can be the most feminine, who can be the most at rest, who can be doing the least. But these women do not have to build their communities. These women are not being called upon to do that. You know who you don't hear talking about resting in their femininity and being submissive? White women and women of other cultures. You know why? Because they don't have to have those conversations. Their communities are built. You know, Asian men are looking at an Asian woman for what type of wife and mother what type of contribution she can make to his household. 
They're looking at the values of these women. Comparing one Asian woman against another Asian woman, you got to be looking at personality, character, values, skills. But see, for a black man, all she got to do is have white skin. He's telling you, you got to cook and bring stuff to the table and be submissive and humble yourself and crawl on the floor like a reptile. But he's not saying that to women in other cultures. And yeah, there is a personality difference, but those women in their culture, in that race to qualify for a husband, they have to have skills and values. It's not a desirability thing amongst those men who are looking for wives. Let's start there because let's be honest, black men ain't looking for wives. They're looking for companions. And a companion is relied upon to bring a different type of experience than a wife is. So let's start there. So you got a lot of men that are training you for companionship and not to actually be wives. And that's problematic. But when you look at the Hispanic culture, when you look at the Asian culture, those men and women are working side by side. Men are happy for women that can transact business, that can run the finances in the household, that can stock a pantry for women that can order business supplies. They're happy to have women that can get down on that stool and do a pedicure right beside them that are stocking shelves in the back of the nail salon or the beauty supply store. And what's crazy, I see that same concept with East African women. Those Somalians and Ethiopians that come over here and open those beauty supply stores as well. The man is working there at night. The woman's working there in the mornings. The children work on the weekends, baby. <laughs> I was dating this African guy and he said that to me. He was like, how many children you have? I have three. He was like, "Ooh, I got a job for them because they're job creators because they're employers. They don't even see you having a bunch of children as a burden. They like, "Ooh, workforce. I got some work for them. These few African men I've dated have been so excited about the fact that I had children simply because one, they knew I was a biological female. And two, they saw opportunity there, opportunity for rest for them from all the work that they had done to create an empire. Oh, she got kids in the mix and they're black kids, so they're going to need a job. I got a job to give. You know, black women, we are the greatest growing group of entrepreneurs. So we are needed to create black jobs to help create this black community. It has to start with the inventors and the entrepreneurs of this society. Black women, we have come off of the plantation, out of working class, taking care of white folks and their households and their kids into having our own households and our own. We have been moving forward decade after decade after decade. It's just not time to rest. I'm sorry. I know a lot of black women who are out here promoting this life of rest and luxury for black women are going to say I'm a mammy or, you know, disagree with my rhetoric on this. But we still have daughters to leave things to and to think about. And we're watching what's happening. We're watching this gender war unfold. We're watching white capitalist patriarchal values pull our community apart. Are we going with it? Because us competing with white women is not seeing who can lay around on the couch for the longest. It's not seeing who can be the best housewife. Our men aren't coming home to us to marry us and make us wives and put us in homes that are paid for that we can leave to our children. Baby, if you think it's time for you to rest, you're a white supremacist too. Simple as that. You are not thinking about the best interest of black people. Because if this whole thing comes down today, it's too many of us that are going to go without homes, without jobs. See, the white man's giving us our jobs if he wants them back. Well, all these degrees that we've achieved, you know, all of this, all of these vacations to Belize, all of that stuff goes away. And you left with that modest bank account that you got. We we don't have stock in anything where if we begin to pull out of the stock market, it would actually crash. No, we are not the financiers. We're the consumers. We're on the back end of this economy. So until some of us are the inventors of Nike, until some of us have whole black communities, we're just not ready to rest. That's what they did to us in the 70s with integration. They say, hey, you can just have some of ours. Don't worry about getting your own. 
<laughs> That's what happened to us when they burned down Black Wall Street, when they dismantled so many Black insurance companies, Black businesses. This has been an ongoing thing to say, don't have your own independent autonomy, Black people. And now we're watching the same thing come down to Black women. You, oh, being independent is horrible. Being independent is bad. Well, just look at the macrochasm of the Black community and what our lack of independence has cost us on a community level. Then come back and apply it to the microchasm of Black women. Our Black men who are telling us that we need to submit at this time when they have nothing to offer us are oppressors. Get out. Yo, I don't trust no one. Ike's the one that does all of the ruling around, the talking, the whole thing. He's the whole thing. They are colonizers. They're trying to come back into a community that they've done no work to build and subject the people who have the resources. Like I said, I don't want to treat our men like they're an enemy. But if they're against the self-determination of black women, if they don't want to see black women be crowned queens, if they don't want to see you have your own queendom because they feel intimidated, if they're telling you that that's taken away from your intrinsic value as a woman to actually have something of your own resources, property, education. Yeah, that's no different than what the white man told us. That's no different than what the white man did to the black community as a whole. If black men want to serve the same people that dominated, subjected them, demoralized them, let them do that. But us, we are not in competition with white women for luxury. We're in competition with each other, with other black women in a healthy competition to build our community to gain some generational momentum to create the next class of business owners of educated people of inventors investors like we are ready black women to take over and nobody is gonna stop us now, if you are ready to unplug from the system of oppression <laughs> that says you don't have value unless you're doing absolutely nothing with your life, go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next episode, you already know what it is. Class is now dismissed. All right, thank you, Wi-Fi's, for sticking around until the very end of this episode. If you like this content, you might want to check out this episode right here, and you can subscribe to my channel with this link here. Until next time, stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. We don't negotiate with terrorists.